welcome to today's On This Day in Tudor History. I'm Claire Ridgway. I'm the author of several history books, also founder of the Amberlynn Files and Tudor Society websites. I'm squinting a bit as it's rather bright, but it's better being out here than having hammer drilling going on uh, in the house. Uh, yes, lots of house projects going on at the moment, but at least you get to see a bit of the Spanish sunshine and landscape. Now today's video is based on an article that I did a while ago for the Tudor Society website. I'm taking you back to 1554 today and the reign of Queen Mary I. For on this day in Tudor history, the 17th of April 1554, Diplomat and politician Sir Nicholas Throckmorton was tried for treason for his alleged involvement in the rebellion led by Sir Thomas Wyatt the Younger, which is known as Wyatt's Rebellion. Um, and this, the rebellion took place in February 1554. A failed rebellion, a complete flop. Now, the indictment against uh, Sir Nicholas Throckmorton accused him, actually, of being a principal, deviser, procurer and contriver of the late rebellion and said that Wyatt was but his minister. So it put all the blame on uh, Throckmorton. But according to Stanford Lemberg, his um, Oxford Dictionary of National Biography biographer, Throckmorton at his trial was very, very eloquent. He ran rings around his accusers. He poured ridicule on the prosecutor's attempts to find him guilty by association and repeatedly caught them out on points of law. So although they'd made out that he completely led the rebellion, he'd devised it, he'd procured it, he did everything, he was able to uh, put up a very, very powerful defence and just pour ridicule on them. So, the jury at his trial acquitted him and the London people rejoiced and in their uh, rejoicing um, they actually stole the head of the recently executed uh, Sir Thomas Wyatt the Younger um, and actually we don't know where that head went to, what they did with it. However, the jurors couldn't join in this celebrating because they were arrested straight after the trial and thrown into prison. They hadn't done what they were supposed to do. They hadn't found this man that had plotted against Queen Mary I guilty. They'd acquitted him. They hadn't done their job properly. Um, so they were arrested, thrown into prison, and they ended up having to pay large amounts of money to be released from prison. John Nichols, in his chronicle, The Chronicle of Queen Jane, Two Years of Queen Mary, and especially of the rebellion of Sir Thomas Wyatt, gives the following account of what happened on that day. The 17th of April, 1554, were led to the Guild Hall to be arraigned Sir Nicholas Throckmorton and Sir James Crofts. Master Robert Winter and Cuthbert Vaughan being also led thither to witness against them. Where that day was no more arraigned but Sir Nicholas Throckmorton, who, tarrying from seven of the o'clock until almost five at night, was by verdict quit, whereat many people rejoiced. Sir Nicholas Throckmorton's talk at the bar was this. He pleaded not guilty and that he was consenting to nothing, etc. The jury's name is, and then that's actually left blank, which quit him. Wherefore, they were commanded to be ready before the council at an hour's warning on the loss of five leave apiece. On St Mark's Day, being the 25th of April, they were before the council in the star chamber, and thence, about two of the clock, Weston and Luca were sent to the tower and the rest to the fleet prisoners. Raphael Hollingshed, in his chronicle, notes that in November 1554, Master Weston and Master Luca and Master Kitely were judged to pay £2,000 apiece and the rest a thousand marks apiece to be paid within one fortnight after. A lot of money to uh, secure uh, their freedom from prison 
all of this simply because they found Sir Nicholas Throckmorton uh, not guilty and acquitted him. Some jurors remained in prison until the 21st of December and it was said that they had to pay three score pounds apiece to get out of prison. So it was a bit of a money maker for the Queen and her government as well. As for Sir Nicholas Throckmorton, you know, what happened to this man that was said to have been the procurer and divisor of this rebellion? Well, he remained in prison and he was released in January 1555 on a bond of £2,000. He then fled to France in 1556 fearing that he would be implicated in a new plot, a plot led by Henry Dudley against Queen Mary I. And, you know, you can't blame him if he thought he was going to be uh, involved in another plot. Surely, you know, she wasn't going to let him live if he was involved in another rebellion against him, against her. But in 1557, Queen Mary I actually pardoned Sir Nic Nicholas Throckmorton and he was allowed to return from his exile in France and return to England in May of that year. And he went on to serve his queen. He fought in France in 1558. And then after Mary's death, he went on uh, to serve her half-sister, Queen Elizabeth I, serving her as an ambassador. And he died on the 12th of February, 1571, of natural causes. So even though they'd made him out to be a procurer of Wyatt's Rebellion, he managed to escape being executed like the others, like Sir Thomas Wyatt the Younger had been, and he actually ended up dying a natural death. So that's what happened on this day in Tudor history, the 17th of April 1554. Sir Nicholas Throckmorton was tried for treason and he was acquitted. And uh, you have the interesting story of this jury that acquitted him uh, being rounded up, arrested and thrown into prison, then having to pay to get out. So that's what might happen to you if you were a juror and you didn't do what the government wanted you to do. I'm not sure there was much justice in Tudor England, was there? Anyway, I'll be back tomorrow with more Tudor goodies. You can subscribe by clicking just around about there and hit the bell to be notified of new videos. I do hope you're enjoying this series. I'm thoroughly enjoying bringing these Tudor goodies to you. See you tomorrow. Bye bye. <laughs>